How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to some more Python programming videos. Still looking at XML RPC. Now we've learned how to build a server. We've learned how to use a client to access servers. We've done our research to learn about the module. So now we're going to take it one less step, one last step further. This is uh, probably the last video I'll do on this series. Um, looking at multi-call, um, it there was some information, uh, I think, presented earlier in the documentation that told us that let's see I want to try and I want to try and hunt it down uh, I feel like it was in the how to that was showing us multi call yeah see if you're writing XML RPC clients, which make a lot of small function calls, you might find that the time that it takes to do all this is pretty hefty, thanks to like how the internet works. So some of these servers allow you to batch multiple requests using multi-call, and that's pretty much the the function that we're going to be using, system.multi-call. And you can find more information about it. You can find more info about it in the uh, in these pages here. That, that apparently don't exist, so never mind, you might have to uh, do some googling. But anyway, we're going to be looking at multi-call. So I've got it open in the documentation, for uh, the typical Python documentation, and it was described at least briefly in the uh, Linux documentation project. So what it does is it allows you to send multiple requests for um, multiple functions. So let's take a look at it in code. I'll fire up idle. One creating our simple server. So import simple our XML RPC server. Server can equal this dot this. The address is going to equal localhost and we'll set the port to be 8000. Now let's define a few functions. Let's define add x and y. That can return x plus y. We'll define subtract x and y. I'm sure you can tell that these are pretty much the same functions that we've seen in the documentation. In fact, you can pretty much see it in the back, <laughs> right behind my shell here. So. I'm not actually going to build the divide function. I'll just go with these three. So, let's register all of these to the server. Server, register function, add, subtract, and multiply. I do want to register our introspection functions. Register introspection functions. And you'll notice there is another function that actually has us register our multi-call functions, which is what we want if we want to have, if our, we want our server to have support for these multi-call functions. And we do in this case because we want to be able to learn about them and play with them. So let's turn that on, and now let's go ahead and serve forever and ever and ever. Notice earlier I was using the control space to kind of look at some of these. Um, you can take a gander at what other things this will do, because I see a lot of these things aren't in the uh, aren't in the documentation. So if you, I think, go through the DIR of server, or at least the help of server, yeah, he, here you go. You can see a little bit more information on what all of these things do. So, uh, if you've got the time, I would definitely recommend kind of looking through that. I'm doing some reading. Anyway, let's serve forever. Forever. Alright, cool. So now our server's on, and let's fire up a client. You guys know how to do this. Import uh, XML RPC lib. Clients can equal XML RPC lib dot server proxy. And the address of the URI is going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost because that's where we're serving it. Port 8000. Okay. 
Now if I use client.system.listMethods, we'll see that we have our functions add, multiply, and subtract. Now, let's take a look at what we can do with multi-call. What this is, or at least how we can create it, is just creating this class with the server passed in. So, let's say we've got this object multi-call, and that'll hold what we need, xmlrpclib.multicall, and we pass in the server, but in this case, it's the client, or at least what we've just named, because that's our connection to the server. And it should be a capital C for multi-call. There we go. Okay. So now, the documentation says that what we do is we have multi-call run all of these functions that we have registered on the server. You can see they're up here in the documentation that it goes through the example. So, let's do the exact same thing. Multi-call dot add, let's say 3 and 7, multi-call dot subtract, 10 and 4, and multi-call dot multiply 2 and 6, I guess. So the way that we run this is actually calling multi-call with some parentheses, like as if it were a function. And the documentation in the example stores it in a result because it's going to end up returning all of these things as a list. Oh, okay, and an iterator. So what we'll do is we'll say result is going to equal this multi-call. And I just want to see for item in result. I wonder if we can print out the item. Yeah, multiply is not... Okay, that's kind of fascinating. It'll, it'll return faults for things that it wasn't able to successfully do. 10 and 6 were able to run, but multiply was not, because I had a syntax error. I, I typed multiply rather than multiply. So, uh... I think I have to, uh, I wonder if I can remove things from the multi-call. I don't think so. Now I'm practically just experimenting at this point, but hey. For result in results. Print result. Wonder if I'll still get the fault. Yep, okay, and the fault is not going to let us move on to the next one. Huh. So, know which functions that you're using here. And you'll see that they've all been returned in this iterator kind of list and object. So that's why I was able to get 10 from adding uh, 3 and 7. I was able to get 6 from subtracting 4 from 10. And I would have gotten 12 had it successfully multiplied 2 and 6. But because uh, I had that syntax error and I wasn't calling the right function, it's going to throw a fault and an error at us. So that's just fine. At least we kind of know that that's what's going to happen. And be sure to call the correct functions <laughs> that you know your server has. So, cool. That's the way that multi-call works. You just pretty much call the functions you need to with the multi-call object, and then essentially run the object with these parentheses at the end here. It's going to return things as an iterator, and you can use that in an array or a list of results here, and then you can get the ones that you need through a loop or anything else that you would use to access those. But there they are, guys. That's everything that I want to cover with XML RPC, from learning about it, from building clients with the XML RPC lib, and from actually creating servers with simple XML RPC server, and a little bit of multi-call. So, that's the way that it goes, guys. That's the way the cookie crumbles, or something like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this series. I hope you liked these videos. If you did, like the video. I mean, that'd be nice. Maybe uh, leave me a comment, give me some constructive criticism, how much my, my stuff sucks. <laughs> and uh, if you're feeling generous, subscribe. You know I'd appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you again.